Hi everyone, welcome back to Orchid Hunters Australia. I apologise, it's been some time and if I've left you hanging, it's going to be worthwhile. I've made some good progress over the last year. Obviously, new camo for a new environment. I've moved up to the wet tropics and you might have seen it in a few of our previous episodes. There's going to be some exciting stuff coming out of this area. Uh, we've also had some kind generosity from a few fans and the Australian Orchid Foundation. As such, I'd like to introduce to you the Orchid Hawk. We also received a new camera. You can't really see it, but it's there. I've been hanging around the Mossman area. I've seen some cool flora and fauna that I really want to show you. Uh, it's been a dry, wet season and a wet, dry season, so it's been stirring things up a little bit. Come settle in for a few minutes of adventure. One of the great things about Cairns and its surrounding regions is the dominating mountains of rainforest wherever you look, collectively known as the wet tropics. A lot of this land has been previously cleared or selectively logged, and we see areas colonised by wattles starting to give way to true rainforest species and eventually dying off forming juvenile rainforest supporting much more diversity. Although colonisers, these wattles can still host a surprising amount of epiphytic life, like this Dendrobium nindii. Excuse the shaky footage, but this is as good as it gets standing on the roof of the cruiser, holding the tripod by its feet. Its canes can be up to several metres in length, and the leaves are a robust and vibrant green. A violet labellum with purple veins is highlighted by white twisting petals and sepals, and of course, even more impressive collectively. The Cairns birdwing butterfly is the largest of all Australian butterflies. The male has striking green and black wings, which highlight a bright yellow abdomen. After getting his energy up thanks to an exotic ornamental, he can focus on the important things in life, like settling down, finding a partner and having kids for a month before dying. Easy, Tiger. What a gentleman. Once her eggs are ready for laying, she'll lay them on a native vine called Dutchman's Pipe, which her offspring will eat and develop on. Provided it's not the weedy and introduced Dutchman's Pipe, which is actually poisonous and will kill her offspring as they feed on it. Heading deeper into the rainforest, where only a handful of European eyes have seen, we come across the Christmas orchid, which stands alone here, but can form impressive colonies that cover large boulders, where light, humidity and drainage is all favourable. The flowers kind of look like someone wearing a fancy party hat. It sits in the shadow of a magnificent giant. This strangler fig tree has multiple large stems supporting it, which wrapped around a long departed host and expanded out into the upper canopy. It supports a variety of epiphytes and even umbrella trees and cycads in this instance. What's that orchid hawk? You've found something. Uh, that's a fern. That's embarrassing. We're gonna have to have a talk about this later, you and I. Yeah? This next orchid we see is tiny in comparison to that massive fig tree. Well, it's tiny anyway. Its flower is less than a centimetre across, and its leaves look like so many other seedlings on the rainforest floor. It's a real needle in a haystack to find out here, and it highlights the need for enthusiasts to watch where they step, minimise trampling and compaction, and any other negative impacts that they might incur.
As hard as the wonderful boys forest dragon can be to see, if you do manage to find one, you'll probably be lucky to get a few happy snaps. They prefer to remain still and use their intriguing camouflage, sometimes pivoting around a small tree to avoid being seen. They can scatter fast if they need to though. Now, contrary to what you might have heard, I don't sleep with this, but I do love wearing this gear out here in the bush. However, it is functional. Have you ever heard of hangers or widow makers? Even a small branch falling can hurt. You don't want to be underneath the branch when it comes down. This large waterlogged tree is just balancing on its rotting stump. Even what appear to be small branches will hit hard and cause major damage. In this instance, an entire tree is completely suspended and waiting to fall. Always be aware when you're traveling. Make sure you tell someone where you're going and always take a first aid kit and communication device. When the rainforest gets a little bit too much, we can head out to the woodlands on the tablelands. It's a bit drier, it's more open. Uh, Orchid Hawk, that's not woodlands. We're doing woodlands. Stick to the script. I'll deal with you later. In the woodlands, where it's a little easier to move, breathe, and spot orchids too. Our next orchid is a tea tree orchid, and as the name suggests, it's found on tea trees, or malaleucas. Commonly in these parts, Malaleuca viridifolia, but you can find it on casuarinas and other hosts too in some instances. I have a particular soft spot for these orchids. Often you might hear that native orchids aren't showy and therefore hard to track down in the nursery, but I think these guys are a brilliant example of what Australia has to offer. Often growing in large numbers where their preferred hosts are available, these orchids add a beautiful splash of colour to what can be a dry and desolate environment. Don't let their often large populations persuade you into taking one here or there. They are commercially available, so contact your local orchid nursery if you'd like to try to track one down. So with butterflies, lizards, waterfalls and everything else, this is just a small testament of what the wet tropics have to offer. And we're going to be having a closer look at it now. This is a whole new walk at Hunters Australia. I hope to bring you some great stuff in the near future. So please, stay safe and happy hunting. See you next time. Something's not an orchid simply because it's growing on a tree. You can get orchids that grow in the ground or on cliffs. Oh yeah, there's a fern. And you can also get ferns that grow in the ground or on cliffs or in trees. You don't need to be rude about it. You'll get there, don't worry about it. it just takes time.